Hello and welcome everyone. Today we are going to talk about some different type of testing approach and what are those terminologies, what exactly that means and that's what we are going to talk about in the world of our quality assurance. So let's see, this is more from the clear perspective and what the offerings we have as part of this session. As we see here, regression testing, as the name stands, regression, that means the change do not always affect the entire program. That means we need to make sure that the end-to-end -end is getting tested properly. And how do we do that? That if the changes are in one part of the system, not necessarily it may or may not affect the other part of the system. So how do we assure that? After each change, entire test module of a system must be run again. So let's say there is a module A and the module B, and we are, and there is an impact in module A. We need to make sure, even though there are no changes in module B, after the system is enhanced, after the testing, after the implementation is done, we must assure that the module A has no impact on module B. And that's how do we assure that? We assure it by performing the entire end-to-end -end testing and that's how we assure that module A doesn't have any impact on module 2. The other concept which is a very important concept is the white box testing. What is white box testing? White box testing is nothing if you're trying to understand anything where you have a clear-cut understanding of what to expect inside the system what kind of a changes you are looking for. That means you can easily understand the final outcome. You can easily have an idea of what will be the final product of it because you have seen what are the inputs and the outputs. The test cases are delivered from the internal design specification or actual code for the program. What it means? It means that the test cases which are created, those test cases are created on the basis of the functionality which is part of your design document. And as we know, the design document is the third phase, third stage in terms of the deliverable. First, it's a business requirement document which is on the top level. Then we have the technical requirement document which is the next level and little more clarified. And then we have the design document which is further detailed out what query, what table, what fields are going to be impacted and what will be the layout of that, what will be the architecture of that. So anytime the test cases are created on the basis of the design document is your white box testing because you are going to do the white box testing. Let's understand the advantages of the white box testing, where exactly it helps. The test, the internal details of the code. How do we make sure that the code which is created is working properly? To do that, we must execute some test cases to make sure what input we are feeding into the system, the output is corresponding and the expected result which we are receiving is in line with the business requirement or the design which we have created. Check all paths that a program can execute. So as you see in this design over here as the diagram showcase, it's going to check end to end to make sure all the blocks are covered as part of it. If these are all the parts which needs to be tested, the white box testing is going to enable that kind of a testing. What are the limitations of it? The limitation and the drawback is that this testing cannot be started unless or until your design document or the code is being completed. Because unless you don't have that level of clarity, you do not know. It's not very transparent. That's the whole point when we say white box testing. That means the transparency has to be there. And the transparency can only be there when you have a design or the code already available on the basis of it. You can write the test cases. So from the limitation perspective, we go by the definition. We need to wait until after designing and the coding the program under test in order to select test cases. So unless we have the design and the code available, we cannot proceed and say we have created the test cases. So it's a very big limitation. 
So let's see what's the other side of the story. The other and the reverse side of the story is your black box testing. As the name says, it's a black box where we do not know what exactly inside that black box. So how does it look like? It looks like exactly the way it represents in the diagram. As you see, you have an input. Events, what will trigger that? The output, the requirements, but still, what is inside the box, we don't know yet. So let's understand the black box testing, uh, testing in more detail. The test cases are delivered from the formal specification of the system. Test cases selections can be done without any reference to the program design or code. That means it's a higher level of the testing. That means it's a higher level of a requirement specification, which is your business requirement document and the technical requirement document. And the black box test cases are requested or created on the basis of the specification, not on the basis of your detailed design or the code. That means we know what exactly we are expecting, but we cannot see what we are expecting because there is no implementation in progress or which is done. So we go, I would say if the design is on the 500 meter from the uh, earth, we go further 1000 feet up to see how our requirement will look like, how our final product will look like. So even though we know what, will, what we are expecting, but still we have no idea how the final outcome would be. So it's not on the design and the code level, it's way ahead of the time when we are writing the requirement and the technical requirement document. So the only test is and the functionality and features of the program. So what it says, it's only going to perform the functional testing. It's only going to check what are the requirements which are going to change as part of the program. That's what the black box testing is all about. Not the internal operation. Internal operation means how it gets to that point. That's not going to check. It's just going to check that whether there is a formal requirement or not. If there is a formal requirement, there is a formal change in the system, that's the functionality it's going to change. So what is the advantage over here we are getting on this? The advantage is the test case selection is done before the implementation of the program. Help in getting the design and coding correct with respect to the specification. So if we have some specifications which are already laid out and on top of that we have created the test cases, when we will execute those test cases, we will know where exactly the failure is. If we are able to catch the failure way ahead of the time before we get to the design and the coding, that will help us improve our architecture. Because if we wait till the code and the design, that means we are late in the overall process because now we are going to make a mistake and then we are going to learn. On the other hand, in the mock testing, we are trying to put a process in place to make sure all the architectural, the designing or the code related issues some way or other can be identified ahead of the time so that we can make the corrections on the given point of time and utilize the time on the overall project with no time constraint. So let's understand both as a side by side. From the definition per se, what exactly the black box is? The black box testing is a software testing method in which the internal structure, design, implementation of the item being tested is not known to the tester. The tester is fully unaware of that what exactly is going to happen when the test case is executed. On the other hand, the white box testing is more transparent in nature. So what exactly it is? The white box testing is a software testing method in which the internal structure, design, implementation of the item being tested is known to the tester. So the white box testing, it's a very transparent, exactly the design is laid out, the code is laid out, everything is available to understand the intrinsic things of the requirement. Level applicable to, mainly applicable to the higher level of testing. The black box testing is some more applicable to the acceptance testing and the system testing. On the other hand, your white box testing is mainly applicable to the lower level of testing, which is your unit testing, which is done when the code is written, and the integration testing where you are doing 
the model A to model B, model B to model C, all the models integrated together, how they perform, that's the kind of a testing. How the functionality is working, that's the integration testing. Responsibility. Who is responsible for each type of a testing? When we say the responsibility for the black box testing, it always comes down to the quality team, which is your software testers, the quality assurance team. On the other hand, when we talk about the white box testing, the white box testing is always by the developer. And why it is by the developer? Because the developer needs to make sure whatever design he has put on the paper, and according to that, whatever architecture and the implementation he is making, that suffices the requirement, and that in lines with the requirement, and he will be or she will be able to only do it when they do the integration testing or the unit testing, as which encompasses your white box testing. So these are the different facts about the white box and the tech, uh, black box testing. If you have any question and if you want to hear more from us, please call us at 848-200-0448 or you can drop an email at info at and you can visit us at www.adiox.com. Thanks and have a wonderful day.